everyone, this is Jane. I'm coming on here today with a quick update on my stitching. I have um, one new start and three finishes. One of them is an FFO and the other two are just finishes. So I'll start by showing you my FFO and it's a housewarming gift for a friend. And it's this free pattern that I found on DMC's website. Um, and I thought, okay, a pink house, a red roof, cute. But I'm not sure she will like it. So I actually asked her if she could pick any color she wanted for a house and a roof. Which colors she would choose. And she chose blue and green. So I picked up, picked out blue and a green, and this is how it turned out. And um, I just finished it in one of these IKEA frames. So yeah, a little housewarming gift for my friend. And uh, this is stitched on some sort of linen. Um, I think maybe 38 or 40 count or something like that. Um, I picked it up at a thrift shop, thrift shop um, and it didn't have any labels or anything on it telling what it was or anything like that. And I thought, I can see the holes, I can stitch on it, so I bought it. And oh, I think I paid maybe about two dollars for quite a big piece of it so and I actually think it turned out pretty good uh, it's it's two over two I believe yeah two over two and the chart has a um, color key to it but I just found some threads that I had in my stash um, instead of going out buying some new threads but I actually think it turned out pretty good yeah so I hope you'll like it um, my next finish is actually a pattern that I won recently in Ingeborg's uh, birthday giveaway, a stitch too far, and it's this one, Survivor's Coffee Definition Series by REGM, and she had included uh, the brown thread, thread for most of the um, writing and the blue threads up here in the cup. Um, you can see this where it says coffee has another color uh, so I just picked one um, I have been stitching a lot of kits uh, previously uh, actually only kits I believe uh, or almost only kits so I have a lot of leftover threads from those kits and um, I actually found a brown in there that I thought would be perfect for this. And as you can see, um, there is variegation in the white up here in the cup. And I actually like that. Um, but I haven't found a place where I can buy these uh, threads here in Europe yet. Um, so what I did was I picked a white DMC and an ecru I'm not sure if it's DMC or something else um, but something from my stash and let me show you my finished piece I actually think it turned out pretty good um, and I actually think that the color I picked here is, is good with the others and how I did my 
modeling up here. I just looked at the picture. Um, I am using a working copy of the pattern. So I, I took the picture and marked the dark spots on that um, working copy and just stitched them up with the ecru and the rest with the white. So yeah. And this one is stitched on a 28 count linen, unbleached linen or raw linen or what you call it. And this piece of fabric is actually 18 years old. Um, if you have seen the first video where I where I show my cross stitch, uh, you have seen my family tree that I have stitched. And this is actually some of the leftover fabric from that one. Um, and I started that one 18 years ago. And it's still not quite finished because I still need to put in all the names. Yeah. I have to chart them out first. Ugh. There's a lot of names and dates and oh my god. Yeah. I would rather stitch. But that's my survivors or as I call it my coffee survivors. And thank you so so much Ingeborg. I have had so much fun stitching this piece and I'm actually going to stitch it again because when my daughter saw it she said oh mommy this would be perfect for my boyfriend and since I had enough of the fabric left um, to do that one and another one of the coffee survivor and my home of a needleworker because I think the fabric would be perfect for that one as well. Um, I thought, okay, I'll stitch it again. It's a pretty easy stitch, uh, a pretty fast stitch. So, yeah, I don't mind. Um, my last finish uh, is a piece I have worked on for about two months and it's the Harry Potter quest by Colleen Carrington and this is a free pattern that I found online um, I found it on Pinterest um, and on Pinterest there was a link to her Tumblr site or Tumblr blog or what it's called uh, where you can actually print the pattern from and um, on the same pat uh, yeah on the same uh, Tumblr uh, Tumblr blog or I don't know what to call it. Um, she has the charts for the four houses individually um, for their quests. Um, but I'll get to that a little bit later. So first I'm going to show you my Hogwarts quest finish. And I'm sorry but I can't fit it all in here. So... And my lighting is so bad. It's coming from behind me over here. So, not directly behind me, but from an angle, you know, yeah. And it's actually cloudy, rainy, bleh. definitely not summer. And it has been like that for at least, I think, two or three days or something. I want summer! I want to see the sun! Well, hopefully I get to see it. So, but this is, this is the Hogwarts quest. And all the outlines all around the swirls here, 
all around the animals and some in here to, you know, some details and around up here and in here and it's backstitching. And I thought I was going to be backstitching for at least two weeks. Yeah. It took me two and a half days. So I was quite pleased with that. The hardest part to backstitch was actually the snake. All the details in the snake. Because you can get lost so easily in this pattern of backstitching. And I actually think that I might have made a couple of mistakes, but hey, who knows? So I'm actually quite pleased about how this came out. Oh yeah, and the backstitching down here, um, all the letters, it was actually quite easy because you don't do the traditional backstitch where you stitch every stitch, you actually stitch from point to point. So for instance, you stitch from here to the top, that's one stitch, and from the top over here, you know, the this diagonal, diagonal is one stitch, and then from the bottom, bottom and up is one stitch, so the end actually only consists of three stitches. Um, so that was pretty quick to do. Um, and as I said, the hardest part was in the snakes, so yeah. And this one is uh, stitched on a 18, ki 18 count Ada, uh, which I tea dyed um, to get a more old look. Um, so, and I actually think it turned out pretty good, and I think that you can see the modeling in it. It is a bit more subtle, I think, at least in the light I can see it in, than it is here. But if I think if you see it in daylight, it might be actually kind of like this. <coughs> Sorry. So that's that piece. And that was my bird saying hello. Um, and my new start. Um, yeah, well, I barely started gritting for the second one of, um, or for second time around on the, the Coffee Survivor piece. Um, so, yeah, not really a, a start. But my new start is the Hufflepuff quest. Um, oh yeah, and this is her Tumblr name, The World in Stitches. Um, and as I said, these are made by... What's your name again? Colleen Carrington. Um, and I found these on Pinterest as well, and found the link to to her Tumblr page, and I actually think these are pretty nice charts. Uh, this one is a bit hard, and some of the others are even harder. It's it's a bit small when I printed it out, and I think you could maybe get it bigger. Um, so some of the colors, the symbols can be quite hard to to um, see apart, and so I think that what I will just do for these four is to put it up on my um, tablet and do it like you do the the um, digital pattern, since it is a digital pattern. So, but these patterns are free as well and can be downloaded um, from her Tumblr blog page thing. And I started this one Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. And this is how far I've gotten. So this is the outside border. Um, and then down here you have the Hufflepuff, you know, the banner. 
across and then you have a little bit more down here and as you can see it's not going to be a very big piece um, and this one is stitched oh yeah the other one uh, is stitched two over one on the Ada fabric and this one is stitched two over one um, on some sort of even weave I think 18 count again I bought this in a thrift thrift store oh my god I can't speak today at least not English um, I promise you I have learned it at school yeah but as you can see it's definitely not Ada because each thread is just one thread I have one that's yeah uh, and not four threads as an Ada so I'd say some sort of even weave and it feels a bit uh, heavier a bit thicker than Ada and one of the reasons why I dyed the Ada is that this is actually looking old probably because it is old so it is a bit yellowed and stuff like that and I thought it was perfect for for um, for these pieces and I just had enough for the four houses um, and that's why I had to buy Ada for the, the um, school quest the Hogwarts quest um, but I think that is it it will work out because the uh, they are going to hang together but on separate uh, they are going to be separate finishes um, and as long as the four house quests are, are made on the same fabric I think it would be great so and I made myself a new needle minder and it's actually